everybody, we're going to talk about a couple of acids and base indicators, nothing too complicated, but some of the common ones. Um, what I have here is, um, you might have seen this in your class, this is your blue litmus paper, and I also have some red litmus paper. So these, these are your two um, different colored litmus paper that can determine your uh, pH of your solution. Uh, another one that I have, you might have seen this one, this has a really complicated spelling, uh, it's your phen phenothelene. And you can see this one, you have to be kind of careful in how you store it because it is very flammable as this is the red one, red uh, box is checked. So use caution when you're using this. I'm going to show you what they do. So for this red and blue litmus paper, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how they turn colors. So I have my vinegar here and I'm going to pour it into a beaker and I'm going to dip both paper and show you what color they'll turn. So I don't really need that much because that's going to be a lot of it vinegar smell. Vinegar is a weak acid, another name for it is acetic acid. So here's my little bit of vinegar in this beaker. So I'm going to take my blue litmus paper and I'm going to take one out and at this point maybe you can sort of anticipate what, which one will change color and which one won't. So let me see. So here's my blue and here's my red. So you can see a red and blue. So I'm going to both dip this I'm just going to toss it in there, I don't know if you can see, but I'm going to toss it in there and you can see that that was my blue one and it turned into red and this is my red litmus paper and if I put this in, you can see that it does not change color, right? So the red litmus paper stays the same while the other one completely changes. So let me show that to you again with the blue litmus paper. So here's the blue one and let me see if I can pour it down the side and for you to see that totally change color just like that. So the blue one changes to red and the red one stays the same. Hmm. So is this going to be consistent with the other ones? So let's try with instead of an acid, let's try base. What I have for base, I have something like your um, baking soda. So this is your sodium carbonate. I'm just going to dissolve a little bit in water and make it basic. So I have some water here and pour it in and let it kind of settle, dissolve. So now I'm going to do the same thing with red and blue litmus paper and I'm going to see which one will change. So here is my red litmus paper and here is my blue. This litmus paper is not easy to take apart. So here's red and here's blue. So I'm going to put the blue one first. So this is very, this is base because it has sodium uh, baking soda and we're going to put this blue one in and it doesn't change color. But let's see if it changes color with the red one. You can see that it does change color. So the red one changes into blue. So then how do we remember uh, which one changes color and which one doesn't? Um, you can always use... Um, the first letter of the blue litmus paper or the, the litmus paper color. How I like to remember it is because blue starts the blue litmus paper starts with B, so blue is for base. Every time it turns blue, then it's basic. So if for the blue litmus paper, if it doesn't turn color, then it's basic. If you look at the red litmus paper, if this turns blue, then it's basic, B for basic. Um, if you can remember that, then you know the opposite is going to be acidic. So acidic will be your red one. Um, that means your blue litmus paper will turn into red. So again, blue for base, and uh, this is blue. So if it's basic, it won't change color. And since this is red, it will change to blue if it is basic. So that's how you determine that. We're going to check out how phenothaline works in solutions. So um, phenothaline, it's an indicator. I'm going to pour some phenothaline into my beaker. You don't need that much. Just make sure that this stays away from any, any open flames because it is very flammable. I'm going to put that away. I'm going to put this in solution. So I'm going to pour some water into here. So right now, I'm going to add some acid into here. So the acid I have is a weak acid. This is just your vinegar. So I'm going to add some vinegar into here. Will this change color? And you can see it doesn't change, it stay the same colorless. What if I were to add some base into here? So the only base that I have is something called a very strong base. This is sodium hydroxide. Uh, this is lye, or this is found in basically your pipe cleaner. So we have to be really careful with this one. Um, make sure you 
have wearing goggles and maybe even gloves, which I don't have, which is a bad example. What I'm going to do here, though, I'm just going to dissolve a little bit here into this uh, beaker of water, and I'm going to mix it in, and I'm going to show you how it works. I'm just going to do this for the camera, but I would have to be kind of careful. And mix it around. Oh, I think my beaker is kind of dirty because it's already pink. You can see that it's turned pink because there's phenothane. But I'm just going to pour this base in here. You can see that it's going to turn slowly, slowly, slowly. The base is not enough yet, but you can see it's starting to. And starting to. It's going to eventually going to overcome the acid right about now. So now there's more base than acid. That's why it changes color because of the phenothalene indicator. So this is very um, basic right now. You must be wondering, can I change this pink liquid back into colorless? I can. Um, so right now, there, this is very basic because phenothalene detects it has a color change when it's about pH of 8 and over. So 8, 9, 10, et cetera, et cetera. So this is pink, so it has that high pH. Um, I can drop and lower this pH because pH scale is like a seesaw, and I can lower that by adding more acid. So I'm going to add more vinegar. I'm just going to add vinegar, and you can see that I'm going to start adding, and it changes into colorless. So I can do this back and forth depending if I have enough. Oh, is this the right one? If I have the right amount, oh, I guess this is the wrong one. I don't have enough. I think I just poured this one out. But you can see that you can change and play it like magic. I can make this colorless. I can make this pink depending on what um, indicator I'm using. So that's an example of a phenothalene indicator. And um, it's all dependent on your pH, like a little sea salt scale. One inside is all acidic, and then one side is basic. So it's just how much you add to tip the scale. So that's your indicator. So. Uh, hopefully that was a good example for you to learn about your litmus paper, colors, and also phenothane. So I'll see you soon.